Danny Thomas was an American entertainer who had a rich career as an actor and producer. Not only was he a great entertainer, but also a great human being, having founded St. Jude's Children's Hospital as well. But did you know what Danny Thomas was doing two days before he died? Join Facts First to learn about the scene Danny Thomas filmed two days before his fatal heart attack. Danny Thomas was born Amos Muziad Yakub Kairouz on January 6, 1912 in Deerfield, Michigan. His parents were Lebanese Catholic immigrants and raised young Amos mostly in Toledo, Ohio. He was raised by devout parents and was active in his church. He was confirmed into the Catholic Church by Bishop Samuel Stritch, who served as Amos's spiritual advisor until his death in 1958. No doubt the bishop played a huge role in Amos's life and spiritual worldview. Amos had a keen interest in entertainment and decided to pursue it as a career in his early 20s. By the time he married his wife Rose in 1936, he'd been working regularly in radio. He performed in a variety of roles in the popular radio program The Happy Hour Club on WMBC in Detroit. At this time, he was performing under the name Amos Jacobs Kairouz. In 1940, he moved to Chicago to perform in nightclubs. It was during this time he decided to adopt a new moniker as he was worried his family would be upset knowing he was performing in nightclubs. He took the name Danny Thomas, and this is how he'd be remembered for the remainder of his life. Before we tell you more about Danny Thomas's life and career, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Danny's Radio, Film, and Music Career While Danny Thomas began his entertainment career in the early 1930s, it was in the 40s when it really began taking off. He played a character named Amos in a comedy show called The Bickersons. His talents were so remarkable he ended up voicing a second character on the show. He had bit parts and supporting roles on several popular radio programs, including The Baby Snooks Show and The Big Show. He eventually became the lead character in his own radio show called The Danny Thomas Show. This was a popular variety sketch comedy show that had two successful runs. The first was a one-year radio program on ABC from 1942 to 43. Another run was from 47 to 48. He moved away from radio in the 50s. In the 1940s, he took an interest in film and television and decided to stick to these mediums to express his creativity. But a brief mention should be made of Danny's music career. While Amos may have changed his name to Danny, he never forgot his Arab roots. From 1952 to 74, he released many albums and collaborated with other artists. He often sang Arabic folk songs with prominent Arab singers. He later created a record that served as a fundraising item for a charity he set up. Danny's first film role was a supporting role as Mr. Paneros in the 1947 film The Unfinished Dance. This musical film became a huge hit and it helped Danny get more work in films even though he wasn't the lead. The following year he appeared in a drama, once again in a supporting role. He played cantor David Irwin Feldman in The Big City. He won acclaim for his work in the film. He continued to appear in major Hollywood productions throughout the 1940s and 50s. In 1952, he played lead character Jerry Golding in the film The Jazz Singer. He won praise for his sympathetic portrayal of a young man who wants to pursue a music career strongly against his conservative Jewish father's wishes. With this role, Danny Thomas established himself as a star. While it might have made sense to continue acting in films, Danny took a turn away from the medium and only appeared in a few more films throughout his career. His final feature film role was in the 1979 Jerry Lewis film called That's Life, which still hasn't been released and for which there isn't much info available. So why did Danny Thomas step away from a successful film career? It's because he soon realized his talents were best suited for another medium that was becoming popular in every American's home. As his film career was taking off, he began making appearances on popular TV shows. He got roles in shows such as the Lucy Desi Comedy Hour, the Jack Benny Program, the Joey Bishop Show, and the Dick Van Dyke Show. Danny's TV Career The TV version of The Danny Thomas Show had a few similarities to the radio show that Danny appeared in in the 1940s. He played Danny Williams, a New York-based entertainer who has to juggle his career along with his wife and kids. The show had similarities to Danny's life and was the perfect vehicle to show off his comedic talents. This was the show that solidified Danny as a major star. It ran for 343 episodes from 1953 to 64. The Danny Williams character was so popular, he briefly played the role again in a short-lived TV show called Make Room for Granddaddy. He continued to act in shows for the remainder of his career until his death in 1991. His other major TV shows included The Danny Thomas Hour, The Practice, Danny Thomas Young and Foolish, 
I'm a big girl now and one big family. He also continued making guest appearances on popular TV shows like Here's Lucy, Kojak, Happy Days, and It's a Living. His final role was as Dr. Leo Brewster in Empty Nest. While best known as an actor, Danny was also a prominent producer. He predominantly served as an executive producer for some of the most popular American TV shows of all time. These included The Andy Griffith Show, The Real McCoys, The Joey Bishop Show, The Dick Van Dyke Show, and Mod Squad. TV was truly Danny's medium, and this is what made him a huge star. But while he dedicated his life to acting and creating excellent television shows, films, and radio programs, he still felt he had a higher purpose. St. Jude and Danny's Final Days While Danny Thomas was struggling as an actor, he depended on his Catholic faith to get him through the challenges of an artist's life. He made a vow that if he became successful, he would open a shrine in the honor of St. Jude Thaddeus. St. Jude was the patron saint who helped those who felt hopeless. When he became a star in the 1950s, Danny and his wife Rose traveled around the U.S. to raise funds for a children's hospital. This hospital would help children who were suffering from rare and often deadly diseases. St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital was founded in Tennessee in 1962 and is now one of the leading charities in the U.S. While Danny Thomas is known as a star to some, he's known as a hero to many. Over three decades since his passing, St. Jude's is still running and conducts research to help find treatments and cures for suffering children. On February 4th, 1991, Danny Thomas filmed the final scene of his acting career. While his professional acting career ended with Empty Nest, the last piece of work he appeared in was a commercial for St. Jude. Two days after filming the commercial for St. Jude, he died of a heart attack at his home in Beverly Hills, California. He received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and was also a recipient of the Bob Hope Humanitarian Award. For his incredible acting and philanthropic efforts, he definitely deserves the praise. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Danny Thomas? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content. By the way, if you haven't joined Factsverse as a member yet, be sure to look below this video and click the join button. By becoming a paid member of Factsverse, you'll get access to exclusive video content that you won't find anywhere else. This includes some of our more mature content that isn't suitable for public audiences, which includes topics like Hollywood actresses who posed for Playboy and some of the steamiest moments in movie history. Plus, you can enjoy these videos completely ad-free. Our biggest fans will notice they also get badges next to their name when they leave comments on our videos. We pay special attention to comments from our members and so do other viewers. So if you want exclusive content from Factsverse or inside access to discussions with other community members, click the join button to get started for just $4.99. There are hours of members only videos waiting for you with new videos added every month. And we're actively working on bringing even more features to help fans like you connect with other members and get more of your favorite content. Just click join and we'll see you inside the membership tab.